Welcome. You've got mail. You've you, got you, mail. You, 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 you are being infected by a brain virus. It is right now pouring into your mind through your eyes and your ears. Its goal, like any virus, is to make copies of itself. It can do this by convincing your brain to like, comment, and subscribe, or share, or watch for a while, or just click on this video. If you're watching this, then the virus already got you. The virus is the video, and so is every video on this godforsaken website. They all get you to get them shared and recommended, and thus copied across thousands of screens and thousands of brains. So does every image and piece of text on the internet, tweets and TikToks and Twitch streams, everything that tends to go viral. You already know the name of these brain viruses. They are called... Memes. Now you're probably thinking of something like this, a funny picture with some text on top. And yeah, this is a meme, we'll call it an internet meme. But the original term was much broader than this. It was invented by this guy, in this book, in the 70s, well before the internet really existed. In Richard Dawkins' definition, a meme is a behavior, idea, or style that spreads from person to person. Memes are analogous to genes in that they both replicate and evolve. A meme could be a song, a joke, a fashion trend, a fortnight dance, a recipe for cake, a skill for making fire, or a style of building bridges. All of these memes jump from person to person, brain to brain, and spread like a virus. Think of an earworm, a song that is extremely catchy that gets stuck in your head. You tend to sing earworms out loud, almost automatically. The song goes out into the air like a sneeze and infects everyone around you, and they will go on to spread it further. Memes propagate by way of imitation, one person copying another. Imitation is, I think, a very underrated and overlooked aspect of human intelligence. Other animals can imitate, sometimes quite impressively. But no creature is built for imitation like we are. We imitate each other all the time through direct instruction or just unconsciously without even thinking about it. Monkey see, monkey do. This remarkable and difficult ability allows us to pick up knowledge and skills from other people who've discovered something useful or stylish. We also imitate other imitators who are themselves imitating other imitators. We are a species of copycats, meme machines. As memes are copied and copies are copied, they might change ever so slightly. Imagine that when our earworm is imitated from one person to another, it is not copied exactly correctly. Let's say, by accident, it's sung slightly faster than the original. If the mutant song happens to be more catchy, or memorable, or easier to sing, then it will spread more readily than the original, and outcompete other songs and other variants of itself. It evolves by natural selection. To be successfully copied, a meme must advertise itself. It must catch people's attention, stick in their memory, and, in one way or another, get them to spread the meme to other people. In the same way that a cold virus makes you sneeze, memes can make you speak or sing or act in a way that spreads the meme. Note that to spread, a meme does not need to be true or useful or beneficial. Lies and gossip and plain stupid ideas can also spread very successfully. People usually don't really like having earworms stuck in their head, but earworms don't care. They spread anyway. Parasitic memes like scams and cults not only convince you that they're good for you, but good for other people, and so trick you into spreading the meme further, all while robbing you blind. Genuinely beneficial memes can also be very successful because they're beneficial, and in this way persuade you to spread them. Your head is teeming with hyper-competitive and contagious memes that are just waiting to get out again. It's not all competition, though. Some memes can cooperate if they work well together, where they help spread each other. A catchy name, slogan, and logo can all survive independently, but together form a more successful meme group. Memes can also be divided and subdivided. You could think of a full book as one meme that is copied over and over, but a single word from that book can be lifted out and become a meme on its own. That is what happened to the word meme, which is itself an extremely successful meme, although its usage has evolved over time. Its creator is also very memeable. It works, bitches.
Memes and genes are both replicators, things that make copies of themselves, and these are the units of evolution. Dawkins defines a true Darwinian replicator as having three mechanisms. First is heredity. Copies must inherit traits from their parents, which makes sense, otherwise they're not really copies. Second is variation. Those copies may be slightly different from their parents, they have a few different traits. Third is selection. Only some of those copies are selected to go on to make their own copies. Most variations could be useless or harmful, but crucially, some could be improvements. The few variations that happen to have traits that improve their ability to make more copies of themselves will tend to, uh, make more copies of themselves. In an environment with limited space and resources, better replicators will outcompete worse replicators, and over time, the system evolves towards better and generally more complex replicators. Now, this is not to say that replicators consciously want to be copied. They don't need to be conscious at all. They can be totally mindless machines that just copy and copy and copy, and the world automatically becomes full of those replicators which are able to survive and reproduce. No goals or guidance required. Genes are obvious replicators, self-copying DNA. But Dawkins argues that Darwinian evolution is not confined to biology. Notice that it doesn't matter what our replicator is made of or where it exists. It could be made with electronics, or cogs and gears, or ink and paper, or human behavior, or goddamn cheesecake, it doesn't matter. So long as there is heredity, variation, and selection, the system will evolve towards ever more complex and competitive replicators. This is what Dawkins calls universal Darwinism, and it also applies to the meme, a new kind of replicator. Memes can take many forms, from speech to behavior to text in a book or images on a computer. In all of these forms, memes can be replicated. Now, it's maybe not quite right to say that memes are self-replicating, because they require us or machines to do the copying for them. In this way, they really are more like viruses, which also rely on using other organisms to reproduce. But copies are still being made, and copies from those copies, and with variation and selection, you get Darwinian evolution. Not genetic evolution, but memetic evolution. Memes are like genes, but they are not the same. One major way that they are different is how variations are introduced. Genes introduce variation through mutations, random mistakes in the copying process, as well as other less random methods like sexual recombination. Memes can also mutate randomly, but more often, successful variations are introduced through human creativity and innovation. An earworm, for instance, could be remixed by someone who is not randomly mutating it, but deliberately changing it to make the song more catchy. An individual human is a big-brained creature, one with foresight and a knack for solving problems. While genetic evolution can only really tinker with what it's got, human designers can go back to the drawing board and redesign a meme from scratch. Someone could write a totally new song by picking up countless elements of other songs and sounds and samples and recombine these memes in a very non-random way. This is not some magical transcendent creativity, but a real, physical, non-random process that happens in your head. Your creativity is a product of your own unique brain and memories and experiences, but also of all the other skills and ideas and memes that are mixing and mingling in your mind. In a sense, memes can have many parents, combining countless sources into new products. Over time, ideas are endlessly remixed and recombined and evolved as they pass from brain to brain and accumulate creative and inventive mutations. This process can help explain the evolution of culture, language, art, philosophy, technology, and many other human things that spread and evolve. Now, there are some problems here. We know what genes are. They're basically pieces of DNA. What exactly is a meme? Say a recipe for cake that looks like Shrek. Is the meme the written recipe, or the recipe in the baker's mind, or Shrek, or the behavior of making the cake, or the cake itself? Well, there's no scientific definition, but I think that most of the problem can be solved by simply saying that the meme is whatever is being copied. If you copy the written recipe, then that's the meme. If you copy the style of frosting, then that's the meme. If you copy the general idea of Shrek-shaped foods, then that's the meme. Something is being copied, even if we can't say exactly, scientifically, what it is. It's not clear if memes are a truly scientific theory or if they're more like an interesting analogy. 
Some people have tried making a science of memetics, but it's controversial and has had a lot of criticism. It is hard to precisely define and track and make predictions about memes. This makes the theory unfalsifiable, at least for now. But I'd argue that most of the claims here are pretty self-evidently true. Ideas and behaviors absolutely spread from person to person, and some must spread better than others. Memes I don't think should be used to explain absolutely everything about culture and language and all the rest, but they seem like an essential part of the explanation. Memes can help answer questions about why certain things exist and why they are the way they are. For instance, why do bicycles exist and why are there so many of them? They don't just appear and they don't build themselves. Obviously humans make them, but those humans didn't invent bicycles on their own, they copied the idea from other people who got their ideas from other people. The ideas for riding and making and selling bikes, the bike memes, got into their heads. Bikes are useful and eye-catching. If one person rides a bike, other people will inevitably see it and want it and reproduce the technology for themselves. Bikes carry people, but they also carry the ideas for bikes. It's true that bicycles could be invented independently by separate people, and we might call this convergent evolution. They converge on the same good idea. But once invented, the idea spreads. People don't have to literally reinvent the wheel. Bicycles are catchy, spreadable ideas, and this is an essential part of the explanation for why there are so many of them. Bikes propagate because bike memes propagate. Designs for bikes that break or are too expensive or just damn ugly will not be copied as often as bikes that are effective, affordable, and pretty. So bike memes are selected and evolved through memetic evolution. In this way, all technology evolves, not because the technology itself literally reproduces, but because the ideas for technology reproduce. So do the ideas for scientific theories, philosophies, religions, music, art styles, ideologies, political parties, cults, scams, and on and on. Again, this doesn't mean that they always objectively improve for our benefit, but rather improve in their own ability to survive and reproduce. If they didn't, you'd never hear of them. Despite this, I'd say that memetic evolution is mostly for our benefit. It supercharges our intelligence by allowing us to share and build upon our knowledge, culture, and technology. These catchy ideas are the products of collective human intelligence, billions of brains thinking for thousands of years. Because memes can change enormously within a single human lifetime, memetic evolution operates much faster than genetic evolution, and it seems to be speeding up. One of the technologies that has evolved a lot has been tools for recording and communicating. We needed to store and send information, so we wrote things down onto clay tablets and scrolls and books. We could store and send these. On these things we recorded, and reasoned, and shared, and gossiped, and lied, and copied, and copied, and copied. These were new homes for memes. Among the ideas being shared were ideas for better ways of recording and communicating. And so we learned to build better mail. Hey Vsauce, Michael here. Where than are your before. fingers? The technology evolved to be better at spreading memes. We got very good at this. As the coronavirus pandemic spreads, the easy to use interactive experience located entirely on A computer is kind of like a brain in that both can store information. Computers are especially good at copying and pasting information, and for this reason, memes can live in brains and bits. They can jump from brain to computer, from computer to computer, and from computer back to brain. The global network of interconnected computers that we call the internet is home to a new species, the internet meme. It could be a funny image with some text, but it could also be a GIF, or a video, or tweet style, or copypasta, or like a strategy for buying stocks. The word means different things in different contexts, usually something funny and viral. But in the original sense of the word, a meme could be any old piece of information that is copied around. An image, a file, a piece of text, a program, or a recipe for Shrek cake. A digital meme can be much more precisely defined as a piece of digital information, a set of bits or characters or pixels that is copied, varied, and selected. Information replicators. 
A perfect example is an internet meme. Someone starts it by clipping part of a video. It's free real estate. They upload it somewhere or share it with friends. It's free real estate. It gets shared more, upvoted and viewed and reposted and copied and copied again and again on screen after screen. Literal bit-for-bit -bit copies are being made in the memory systems of thousands of computers across the world. It's free real estate. Variations are introduced as the meme is screenshotted and filtered and compressed over and over, the deep-fried meme. These memes can do well, but with a little human insight, we can combine memes to make something truly special. It's free real estate. Smartphones and social media explode this process and memes can be copied across billions of devices and brains. The meme has gone viral. Social media is a hotbed of memetic evolution and it can get up to some interesting stuff. These days TikTok is maybe the most prolific example, but since we're here let's talk about YouTube. Here on YouTube we have a thriving little digital ecosystem of information, videos and thumbnails and titles and ads and comments and the people behind them all. There is competition and co- Okay. There is competition and cooperation, reacting and reviewing and responding and re-uploading and replicating. In general, the most successful memes are the ones that catch and hold people's attention. Thumbnails in particular are in an ever-escalating arms race of attention-grabbing content, a competition of clickbait. They tend towards stuff that massively stimulates your brain, super stimuli. Delicious food, cute animals, explosions, pretty faces, extreme faces, strange faces, lots of faces. I also must play this game, although I'm not very good at it. As flowers vie for the attention of pollinators, memes vie for your attention, and time, and money. Like any ecosystem, the internet is full to bursting with predators and parasites, malicious memes and malicious people that spread them. Spam, scams, misinformation, disinformation, trolls, and viruses, all finding their way to survive and spread. And of course, Rule 34. Predictably, some of the most successfully reproducing images and videos on the internet are of people reproducing. But in the same ecosystem we find genuine educators and entertainers, marketplaces for human creativity, libraries of collective knowledge, superhighways for the flow of ideas and jokes and songs and culture. In this overwhelming information ecosystem, it can be difficult to find the truly beneficial memes, but an easy and free way to do so is through the sponsor of this video, Brilliant.org. That's right, I got a sponsor and I am very proud to have Brilliant support my work. Brilliant is an online learning platform that teaches you true knowledge and useful skills through interactive learning. If you like my work, you'll know how much I value interactive websites that let you learn by trying things yourself. This is the kind of stuff I love. Brilliant offers thousands of math, science, and programming lessons that are engaging and allow you to explore and learn at your own pace. Check out the computational biology course to brush up on the basics of genomes, or get a deeper understanding of artificial intelligence with their courses in neural networks. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, Brilliant customizes content to fit your needs and expand your knowledge. Collect your own beneficial memes from Brilliant for free for 30 days at brilliant.org slash emergentgarden or click on the link in the description. The first 200 people to join will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant for supporting the channel and for spreading good memes in our information ecosystem. And within this ecosystem, you have found me. Or rather, I have found you. Somehow, this meme found itself onto your screen and now into your brain, but you probably did not find this video through a friend or by word of mouth. Most of my viewers come from browse features or suggested videos, meaning it was likely not recommended to you by a human, but by the algorithm. The YouTube algorithm watches and analyzes every piece of content uploaded here. Using methods of machine learning and data science, it discovers which content attracts clicks and watch time and likes and interactions. It then tries to predict and promote content that will maximize those metrics and profit. Recommendation algorithms for social media are playing a growing role in the selection and replication of memes. They decide which ones you see and which ones you don't. Memetic evolution is no longer entirely driven by humans. 
you found this video because an AI system showed it to you. It is not always known how these systems work or what kinds of content they will promote, even by the people who make and manage them. Nobody knows anything except the algorithm. But newer algorithms don't just process or select memes, they make them. Generative AI has exploded onto the scene with image generators and large language models and now even video gener- Oh, okay, wow. Video generation is not quite there yet, but the other ones are pretty good. These algorithms are trained on datasets of text or images that are scraped from the internet, the information that is copied around, the memes. They output strange and creative content like songs or jokes or code or recipes for Shrek cake. Much of what they produce can be flawed, silly, and useless, but crucially, some of their outputs will find themselves being copied and pasted elsewhere. These are meme machines. They're made of memes, and they make memes. Could AI-generated memes be more successful than human-made ones? Many of the images and animations in this video were AI-generated, and the thumbnail likely is too. We may find that these models give birth to a whole new breed of spam, scams, and misinformation, but all the same, they could come up with genuinely good ideas, solutions to difficult problems, and new kinds of creativity outside our imagination. But these models just copy what they're trained on. They're just glorified autocomplete, just stochastic parrots, just an imitation. I hope you can see why that is not a good reason to dismiss the technology. Imitation is a big deal, and we ignore it to our peril. Uh, to be fair, I think these models are overhyped for what they can do now, but the technology will continue to evolve, and I see immense potential for good and bad in these new imitators and replicators. Ultimately, all of these meme technologies are young, unpredictable, and come with their fair share of problems. But they can be improved for our benefit, through open conversation and criticism and cooperation. These behaviors are good memes, and you must spread them. Okay, to close things out, let's do a little meme experiment here in the comment section of this video. I would like you, the viewer, to post a comment and in it make a picture out of emojis or emoticons or ASCII art or anything that fits in a comment. You can paint a scene or tell a story or make something funny, whatever you want. You can make it from scratch or you can copy other people's creations from other comments. In fact, you're encouraged to. I call these pictures memotes. Literally just copy-paste a memote from someone else's comment and you can make changes to it, remove things from it, combine it with other ones, or don't change a thing. You can just write normal comments, but I encourage you to include a memote in that comment, just at least copy something else. Once you post, someone else can copy and modify your memote. Now don't expect much credit for your creation here, this is a place for copycats. If you're on a phone, the YouTube mobile app doesn't let you copy comments. You'll have to open the video in your phone's browser, the actual website. I'll post a link for that. Okay, some ground rules. Obviously, don't make explicit or inappropriate memotes. You know the ones I'm talking about, YouTube-friendly stuff only. I will be moderating and deleting and banning if I need to. Next, do not spam comments. Don't post over and over and over. If you want to post several times, give it, let's say, an hour between each post. Spam will be deleted, so it won't be a successful meme. You can copy things from outside this video and post them here, and I guess you can copy things from here and post them elsewhere, but once again, do not spam. That will ruin the whole thing for everyone. If you do that, just post it once where it makes sense and don't be annoying. This experiment has been running in my Discord server for a bit, and that's gone just about how you'd expect. It's a little chaotic. Now, I have no idea how it's going to work here, and I may need to shut it down if there are issues, so we'll see how this goes. Check the pinned comment for updates. If most of us play nice, we can evolve a little ecosystem of memotes right here in the comments, and some might spread beyond this video. Special thanks to my music guy for making the meme song for this video. I hope it's gotten stuck in your head as much as it's gotten stuck in mine. And thank you for watching this brain virus and for helping it spread. I forgot to mention that you must like, comment, and subscribe or you'll be run over by a steamroller tomorrow. Then, after you do that, maybe you should go outside. Take a break from the internet. I'll see you later. Goodbye.